In this video, we're going to look at the surface area of an ellipsoid. So we've seen this in some of the earlier videos. When given these parametric equations, do we trace out this ellipse? Well, we're going to revolve this ellipse 360 along the y-axis. So when you revolve this ellipse 360 along the y-axis, do we trace out a 3D solid? Well, that 3D solid is called, an, is called an ellipsoid. So we're going to work out the surface area of that ellipsoid. So we've seen this before in, in some of the early videos. So when you come to read this, the way you should read it is that a small change in time. So let's say the particle is right here at this moment in time. So when you come to read this, um, a small change in time. So, uh, so it's a small change in time. So, so from here to here, that small change in time would be dt. So a small change in time would result in a particle moving from here to let's say here. So, so a small change in time, so that's this dt here, a small change in time from here to here would result in the particle moving from here to here. So, uh, so, 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 so when you start with your dt, if you combine it with this whole thing here, then that, then this whole thing here would represent the, uh, the, the, the distance that the particle has moved along that path. So, so it represents this, this length here. So, hang on, let's start again. A small change in time. So, a small change. So, so currently the particle is, let's say, here. A small change in time would result in the particle moving from here to here. Well, combine the whole thing here. It would represent this small change in, uh, in the actual arc length. Now, once you've got your arc length, once you've got your arc length, we, you, you would need to re revolve it 360 along the, uh, the, uh, the y axis. So once you've got your arc length, hang on. So, so you start out with your dt. Uh, so you start out with your dt. A small change in time will result in the particle moving from here to here. So combine the whole thing here. It will represent this small change in, in the arc length. Once you've got that small change in the arc length, you would need to times it by 2 pi r. Well, the r, so because you're, you're revolving at 360 here, you, you would need to know the radius. Well, the radius, this distance here is given by this. So the radius, th this r here is actually this. It's actually this. So this thing here is this distance from here to here. So once you've got your, your small change in the arc length, you will need to times it by 2 pi r. Well, this r here happens to be this thing here. So if you times it, will, so, so hang on. So a small change in, uh, a small change in time, uh, w w when, when you combine it with this, that represents uh, your, your ch small change in, uh, in the arc length. Once you've got that small change in the arc length, you will need to times it with 2 pi r. Well, this r here is, uh, is this thing here, is this thing here. Okay. So, um, so, so, uh, so once you've got this, combine it with this, that would then represent the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the small change in the arc length. And then you times it with 2 pi r, times it with 2 pi r, then that would represent the, uh, the, the surface area along that strip. And then, so, so that would represent a small change in the surface area. Well, you, you would then need to sum up all the, all the surface area of all the strips. So you would need to sum up everything from, from, uh, from, from, well, if, if you look at this, you're, you're, you're integrating with respect to t. So, so if you look at this here, it is the time that's driving everything. So, so you would need to integrate it. Well, you would want to integrate it from here all the way to here. But here you're, uh, but here you're integrating with, you're integrating it with respect to time. So, so you would need to, uh, you would need to find the time from where to where. Well, if you go back to here, um, you, you, you ultimately want to in, integrate from here all the way to here. But it, it is the time that's driving everything. So you would need to integrate it from, from the time of zero to the time it takes to get the, for, for the particle to get from, from here to here. So that time there would, would actually be, be, uh, be pi. Uh, two pi would represent the particle moving all the way around here. But you're, you're, you're only, re you're, remember, you're revolving everything, uh, along here. So, so, so you only need the, the particle moving from here to here. So the, it, 
the, the time that you will need will be 0 all the way to, to pi because remember it is the time that's driving everything so, so in the time period of 0 to pi the particle would have traveled from here all the way to here and that's all you need so, so when you come to um, when you come to sum up all the areas um, just remember that it is the time that's driving everything so you're integrating with respect to t well the, the t would need to start from 0 to all the way to to pi uh, so 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 the time from uh, from 0 so the time from 0 to pi would mean the particle would have traveled from here all the way to here okay so so um so in or, in order for us to um to work out the the surface area we would need to integrate this whole thing here okay from from 0 to pi so in order for us to work out the surface area we would need to um to evaluate this and i will continue in, in the next video okay and this is actually quite hard to integrate i will continue in the next video